America's trash keeps piling up. Over 245 million tons of garbage were produced in 2005 alone. That's 4.5 pounds per person every single day. Now landfills are filling up and they're closing. And now small towns, big cities, and states across the country are trying to figure out what to do with all this trash. And the biggest fight sometimes stems over who should pay to make the trash green. Kate Sinding is a senior attorney at the Natural, Nat, Natural Resources Defense Council and Angela Logaman. Mancini is Director of Risk and Environmental Policy at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Thank you both for joining us. Good afternoon. All right, Angela, let's start with you. Recycling certainly sounds a good way to start. Is this a solution? Well, I would, I would say that the solution really isn't about government recycling mandates or government management. It's really about finding a way to bring market process into the waste management industry. Right now, it is driven by politics and pol political priorities, and this isn't always a good thing for the environment. In fact, a market process where you have prices and competition is actually the best way to promote resource conservation, and we don't have that in New York, and I think that's why we're having a lot of the problems we're having. You know, Kate, let's hear you react to that. Is the, uh, the vision or the, the promise of profit the way to get recycling part of the system? Well, in fact, the promise of profit is, is a part of the solution, and it's happening right now. Unfortunately, the market is a broken market, and the reason that recycling has been so successful in places like New York City is with the addition of government regulation. Sanitation, garbage collection, like so many other services, from police to uh, you name it, are services that need to be provided by government. And government's function in this case is to get the valuable materials that recyclers can turn into new products out of the waste stream, out of incinerators and landfills, and into the hands of recyclers where they can realize a profit. Angela, do you think that there are enough market forces out there to make it worth it for businesses and people to make their garbage green without government regulation? In fact, New York City, 75% of its waste is handled by the commercial sector. The commercial part has always been private, and they've had pretty good um, recycling rates, usually higher than the government program. The other problem with the government program is what they call as recycling or diversion rates. We don't really know that this stuff is all going to recycling. So you have a lot of uh, costs and inefficiencies that are very hard to measure and have been problems in a lot of cities around the country. The question becomes not whether we should mandate recycling or any other alternative, it's how to make them compete. And in that case, the lowest cost option will be the one that uses the fewest resources. Recycling, like anything, uses resources. It means there are more trucks on the road. It means there's more energy being used for some other way of managing the waste. How do you get a system that drives us toward the most efficient way of managing that waste? It's always going to be a mixture of recycling, landfilling, waste to energy, and a variety of things. The question is, who decides? Is it going to be people making rational market decisions, or is it going to be regulators and politicians who are looking to subsidize friends? and keep waste out of their neighborhoods and who are looking to look good. And that's a big problem in New York. You know, Kate, you clearly Kate, have a different opinion on that. So what do you think that, that cities and the government can do? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole lot to respond there, to. First of all, we know that recycling rates have been uh, very good in New York City and in, and in most places in which recycling exists around the country. Recycling has been on the rise around the nation, and we expect that trend to continue. It's certainly true here in New York City. Uh, sure, there are, there are parts of the waste stream that can't be recycled, but absolutely the most efficient way and the way that produces the fewest, by far the fewest tons of greenhouse uh, warming, global warming gases per ton is recycling over either landfilling or incinerating. Okay. What, what, what uh, Angela's not taking into account is all of the costs associated with manufacturing products from virgin materials, whether it's mining the you, oil you know, that goes into your plastic bottle I, to transporting to disposal, and those are vastly reduced in re with recycling. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to stop that there. What, one thing is clear is that something needs to be done. What needs to be done will surely continue to be debated. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming Thank on the program. Thank you, program. JJ. Right now, police are trying.